Hey guys, Woody the Unexceptional Gamer grabbed a long game today because I'm feeling a little chatty. Uh, quick note on the gameplay, I think I'm playing with no perks and no attachments, so uh, whatever, I just did the best I could. But this isn't about the gameplay, this is Mail Monday, a weekly series about your questions and my answers to them. Here we go! It's the little things. Dear Woody, I have a host of seemingly little problems that are negatively affecting my social life, self-esteem, confidence, etc. I have plenty of friends and a loving family, but I still feel completely alone. I haven't got anyone that I trust to talk to, mostly because I'm afraid they'll think differently of me because I'm scared, lonely, or confused. None of these problems on their own are devastating me, but as a collective, they are affecting me. Stuff like alcohol, regret, my future, and just a general fear of the stuff that is weighing me down. Any reply would be amazing. Love your videos, you're an inspiration great father and an incredible person overall oh well well thank you keep up the great work it's the little things huh like um, it's been my experience that you know <laughs> cliches here but like water finds its level I used to work with this guy his name was Ralph and Ralph was a huge fan of the Rams that was like his thing he was totally into the Rams they're an American football team and um, you know, he would, like, literally stress over who they were drafting and whether or not they made the right choices and how well things went. And then preseason games and all season long, he would be totally into this. Not just as a sports fan, but as, like, a genuine concern for how well his team was faring. It dominated his life. And if you know the Rams, most of the time, they're not faring that well. <laughs> so, um, uh, th you know, that was his deal. And then he had kids. And he cared about the Rams a little less than he did before, but he moved on and started worrying about other things. You know, like his, his family, his children, you know, how they're getting along in school and, and you know, other, you know, to what to me are more critical fears. But, like, watching him go through this, even the young me just sitting there observing how other people reacted to the life around them, it was like, man, you know, this guy just likes to be in a state of concern. Right, that that's like his home base. It, I think if he won the lottery, it would give him a temporary boost, and then he'd be right back to where he was. You know, concerned about uh, the other things that exist in his life. There are people who are just kind of built like that, and you know, it, like <laughs> I would like you to sort of rewire and refocus and find the positive in life. I I, I wish I could make you do it. I wish I could rewire for you, but it, it's. You know, where you are is not where you want to be. You know, and, and everybody has these same feelings that you do too. Like I, I can remember sitting in the car and my mom would put on these tapes that taught you how to sell stuff because she was selling real estate at the time and, and she'd listen to these tapes that would help her do it better. And the guy was explaining that it's the little things in, you know, that can break a deal. And his big thing was this. He says, elephants don't bite. You know, it, it, when you go through life, it's not elephants that are that are giving you your trouble. It's mosquitoes that are constantly biting at you. But, you know, as I listen to what you've got going on, right? You have a loving family. You have plenty of friends. Like, you know, for a younger guy, all the big stuff is in order. You know, when you get older, then the big stuff changes a little bit. But it's still in order, right? Like, the people ask me how I'm doing. Like, I'll talk to my family or friends, like, who I'm sort of catching up with. And they want to know, like, how are things? And it's like, well... You know, the, the big stuff is kind of in order. The family's not in debt. The kids do not seem to be on a path of either prostitution or axe murder. You know, everyone seems to be mostly healthy. Like, yeah, so all the big stuff is kind of in line. We're doing okay. However, <laughs> you know, it, it's the little things in life that, that seem to be occupying, you know, most of my attention. And that's just the nature of life, right? It, it seems like that's the, how it is with everybody. So you're not alone in this thing. But... If you do a little more to focus on the big stuff, if you do a little more to realize, like, you know what? Things are more or less okay, and, and you're, you're worrying too much when uh, when you're actually a guy who, who's got it good, then, um, you know, maybe you can do a little better. Maybe you can, you know, think along those lines. It, it sounds like you're halfway there, and uh, if you just let the little things go, they're just mosquitoes, then you'll be okay. Questioning sexual orientation help. Dear Woody, I'm a young guy teen, but I'm not sure if I'm straight, gay, or bi. I've had female crushes and no guy crushes, but out of curiosity, on two occasions, I've pleasured myself to gay porn. All right. I didn't really care at the time, but then it got on my mind. At this point, I don't know what I am, and I'm extremely confused. Is this normal for teens? Do most guys go through this? Please help. Doesn't have to be on Mail Monday. I just want advice. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Racist lefty. All right. Let's talk about this. 
I was watching a comedy routine. It was by Bill Burr. So some of you guys may have seen it too. He's hugely funny. And uh, he was talking about like his reaction to gay porn. And he, and he said this. He says, when he was a little kid, he saw a man and a woman having sex. And they, they were doggy style. And he didn't even know what it was at the time. But he knew he liked it. You know, he, he didn't know what was happening. But he knew that that someday would be for him. That he was a fan already. And I feel the same way. And I also have, like, the counter experiences, right? Like, you know, I, I've seen um, a porn, I'll just say it. I've seen porn where um, feet play some sort of major role in it. And I don't know what the deal is, but it, it's just not my kink. Like, I, I, I see feet and I'm like, I don't know, you know, don't they almost always are in some sort of state of not cleanliness they're they're they sweat a lot um you know like I, the whole foot fetish thing you know if that's you knock yourself out but it's clear to me just instinctively that the whole foot fetish thing is not me like i it, it, i'm not down for it and um you know, I watch uh, Game of Thrones and Spartacus on TV. And if you don't know, those are both like, you know, uh, adult TV series. I think everybody's heard of those two. And uh, in each of them, there is like this little, like every so often, like guys will be hooking up. You know, I don't think it goes beyond kissing, but whatever. You know, it, it, it'll, guys will be hooking up. And uh, I see it and it, like, it's just clear to me at a base level that, um, you know, like it, if that's your thing, be you, but it, it, I'm not wired that way. Like I'm, I'm not, you know, it's not my turn on. It's not my king. So, um, you know, when you look at it and, and apparently, you know, if seeing gay porn gets you off, you might be a little gay and, um, or a little bi. It sounds like, because you definitely have female crushes and there's only on two occasions where guys turn you on. So, um, and, and I forget who else said this, but it, you know, we've talked about it on painkiller already. There is this notion that I have of percent gay, right? You know, like <laughs> if, if you take notice of the guy in, in, in the in the porn, then maybe you're, you know, whatever, 5% gay. You're straight. You don't actually want to, you know, to, like the, 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 maybe the rest of the scene, you know, imagining like guy sex with your hands on his like muscled back or something is totally not for you. But, um, but you know, whatever, you know, you, Take notice of an attractive guy. Maybe you're five percent gay. And that's fine. I don't care. You know, <laughs> um, it sounds like you going to like all guy porn. It shocks. Maybe you're thirty percent gay. Maybe you're half gay. Maybe you're straight up bi. I don't know. But over time, you'll figure this out. Here's the advice I want to give to you. And, and longtime listeners know this stuff uh, from me already. One, I wouldn't broadcast the gay thing while you're still in high school. Uh, it, <laughs> I, I just answered another letter today from, a, uh, it was a girl actually, no, yeah, it was a girl, and um, she had this gay thing, and she was in Sweden, and, and actually, and, alright, I, I don't want to out her, I think this is still anonymous, she's a girl, and she's a uh, potential transgender, and it's making her like super unhappy, and, and people in high school are giving her a hard time about it, and she feels trapped in her body, or he feels trapped in her body, I don't know, so, um, uh, the thing is, when you come out in high school, you're opening yourself to a level of ridicule that you might not be down for. You know, if someone else has already blazed this path at your high school and you're confident it'll work out, then maybe those things change. But, um, you know, if you're young, be careful about who you share your secret with. That, that's one piece of advice. And the other is, dude, you have a lot of time to figure out who you are, you know, and yeah. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure this guy's young. He doesn't say, give any hints in his letter. But um, you do not have to figure this out now. You do not have to label yourself today. You can just sort of, you know, shrug your shoulders, love yourself, and uh, and be happy with who you are for a long time without, uh, you know, stressing over who you are. You know, who you are will emerge, and uh, you don't have to do that right now. Dear Woody, I'm 14 years old and I live in Europe. I have a friend that can be a good friend and a shitty one at the same time. We have the same interests and sometimes we make each other laugh. But the problem is that sometimes he acts like a jerk. How can you know if you have a good friend or a bad friend? A good friend that just naturally acts like a jerk? And what does it take to be a good friend? I hope you answered my question. Keep up the good work. Yeah, it, it's hard to, to get the details of, you know, of what's going on from just this letter. It, it's kind of short on examples. But, um, you know, there's a, there's a balance here, right? Like, on one hand, I have been called a dick way more often 
than people that by people that like me than people that don't right there's a certain amount of like guy oriented ribbing and joking and stuff like that that um that is just par for the course right you know that sometimes that's just how guys relate to each other and um you know it, it's not all sweet and telling each other that that we look pretty like uh like girls might do in their relationships having said that you know it, it, there's also this concept of a toxic friend like <laughs> You don't want people in your life that are tearing you down. You don't want people in your life that secretly hope they do better than you. And by the way, this also applies to the boyfriend-girlfriend thing, right? Or, or whatever, you know, partner thing. Um, once you get past the stage where you're just happy there's a girl that lets you touch her titties, at some point you become partners in this thing you know that the, the two of you have a trust and an experience together and you know you want her to do well you want her to be succeeding in life when you get there you know the, the things that make you a good like your know, husband are the same things that make you a good friend you know when you're there for somebody else and, and not just like there for them when they're down but there for when when they're doing well when you're there for them all the time when your constant state of mind is i want good things to happen to this person how can i help it how can i facilitate that and and they do it in return then you're being a good friend like when you have that kind of person in your life then you've got it going on when you have a toxic friend one who's kind of cool to you sometimes, but often sort of undermines you. One who talks about you to your other friends and, and, you know, tears you down in private, but is nice to you in person. When you have one of those friends who, you know, you, you kind of hang out with just out of sheer momentum, not because that relationship is doing the two of you any good, then it's time to dump your friend and find one who's not so damn toxic. I, uh... You know, I wish I could pick everybody's friends for them. I'm mostly thinking of my kids at this point. But um, yeah, toxic friends, they creep into your life and they're incredibly common. But, uh, you know, you have to evict them from your life if, if they're tearing you down. That's the deal. So look at your friend and judge him and decide, you know, is this someone who is a good influence for me? Is this someone who does positive things for me? Or someone whose sole motivation in life is to, to make mine worse? If he's that guy, get rid of him. Uncontrollable boners. Oh man, before I read this, I just want to say, the reason I answer questions like this is I wish there was someone to answer questions like this for me when I was a kid. You know, I, where else can you get anonymous answers to stuff like this? I, I wish I knew this. I, you, you can't just like ask someone in your community because then someone in your community knows you're getting boners every single class. That's the problem. So anyway, here's the question. Hey Woody, I'm 17 years old and I find myself having an uncontrollable amount of erections. But it's getting in the way of my daily life because they're out of the blue during school and I have to try to keep my mind off it by tying my shoe or just thinking about odd things so that they can go away in order for me to get up to the whiteboard and do a math problem. I definitely get at least one per class. At least one per class. It's not a problem at home because I can just wank it off or something. Please help. I figured this would give some variety to Mail Monday. Is it normal to have constant sexual thoughts? Yeah, dude, that's normal. That's totally normal. You're a 17-year-old guy. They're infamous for having constant sexual thoughts. Uh, I would say that if you're getting a boner every single class, you might be overachieving a little bit. Like, I might have been an every other class kind of guy. But, um, yeah, it, it doesn't raise any alarm bells with me. You know, <laughs> that's just the nature of the deal. Having said that, you know, there are some things you can do to, to help out. You know, you kind of figured it out with the thoughts. Here are the things that I would think about to get my mind off of sex. And by the way, this isn't just to make the boner go down. If you're at the, the next stage of your life where you're actually having sex, then uh, these are techniques I've used to last longer. You know, take your mind off it. So, so here it is. Number one, math problems. I used to do that. I would multiply, like whatever it is that presents that level of challenge for you that you can actually accomplish like multiplying two digit by two digit numbers in your head right that's something you can probably work out if you focus on it right you know like you know what is 23 times 92 if you work hard enough you can figure that out in your head but for me that takes concentration and that concentration makes boners go away or makes you last longer in bed the other thing i used to do and do this exercise with me right now as you're thinking here Picture a triangle in your head, right? Triangle, boom, there it is, you've got it. Equilateral triangle landed in your head, white on black, whatever. Now draw a circle around that triangle so that the edges of the triangle are hitting the circle, right? So now you've got a triangle inside a circle. Are you picturing that well? It takes a little bit of concentration to do that accurately. Now make it hard. 
spin the triangle inside of the circle or spin the circle around the triangle, right? You know, have it have the circle rotate like you used a ring on a table as a top. This is the kind of thing that I would sometimes do in my head, you know, either to make a boner go away or, or, or to last longer in bed because it would freaking occupy my head and it would get my mind off of the great things that are going on around me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like this sort of thing, we'll, we'll get it down in a hurry and help you, um, you know, do problems on the math board or class without embarrassment. I hope this helps. That was Mail Monday. Oh yeah, this video was like 16 minutes long. If you're still here, drop a like.